there and welcome to another video and this is the last video on differentiation for the Edexcel Core 3 Maths A Level Syllabus. In this video I'm going to review all the techniques you need for this exam. Looking at the scheme of work, we've now done everything but I'm, when I'm reviewing everything I thought it would be good is if I differentiated some of the functions mentioned explicitly in the syllabus just to make sure we're right in line with the examiner and what we need to be able to do. Okay, to start with, I wanted to remind you of the techniques we've learned. The chain rule is the very big technique. So, if I was differentiating something, um, let me just move that over here actually. If I was differentiating something like this, y is equal to something like, let's say, 2x uh, squared plus 1 cubed, something like that. Okay, I could differentiate it via the chain rule. The chain rule it is, I showed you it in three slightly different ways. Um, let, let's just quickly do this example in each of the ways. If I let, I would do this very small, uh, if I let u be 2x squared plus 1, so that y was equal to u cubed, then du dx would be 4x dy du would be 3u squared and then dy by dx using dy by du times du by dx would be equal to 4x times 3u squared. 3 times 4 is 12, you've got your x and u squared was 2x squared plus 1 all squared and you're done. Now that tends to be the longest version of the chain rule. Here I can apply the chain rule here because I can notice actually that y is of the form uh, f of g of x because it is 2x squared plus 1 cubed. So if I had let my f of x be equal to x cubed and my g of x to be equal to uh, 2x squared plus 1, then certainly y is of the form uh, f of g of x because you put g of x into the x cubed function and you get 2x squared plus 1 all cubed. So d dy by dx by this version of the chain rule here is g dashed x, so it's this differential here which is 4x, the differential of f which is 3x uh, squared, so 3 but you don't put x in, you put g of x, so 3, 2x squared plus 1 all squared. And tidying that up again you get 12x 2x squared plus 1 are all squared, which is as was above. And lastly, you can notice this is a function to the power of n. So probably the easiest way of doing this is to bring down the power, 3, multiply by the differential of the bracket, which is 4x, and reduce the power by 1, 2x squared plus 1 squared. And again, you would get 12x squared, uh, 12x, 2x squared plus 1, uh, all squared. So that's the chain rule. I did the chain rule on the same function there just to show you that it, it, there are different forms of it. The chain rule is not given to you in the exam. You need to know how to do this. Next techniques we learn. The product rule, the quotient rule and the fact that dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy. This is not given to you in the exam. The quotient rule is given to you in the exam and this fact here is not given to you in the exam. You would use this rule if you have two functions of x multiplied. For example, y is equal to, let's say, x squared sine x. There's two functions multiplied together. You would use this rule if y was, say, x squared over sine x. And you would use this rule if you had an, a, a situation where x was the subject of the formula and you wanted to work out dy by dx because you could work out dx by dy and then flip it. Okay, so there's where you would use this. Not in the exam, the product rule. This is the product rule. Is in the exam, the quotient rule. And this uh, dx, dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy is not in the exam. Okay, next uh, things we needed to know, how to differentiate exponentials and logs. Here are the rules. If y is e to the x, dy by dx is e to the x. If y is e to the f of x, dy by dx is f dashed x e to the f of x. 
So for example, here, if we had y was equal to 5e to the x, 5 lots of this, then dy by dx would also be 5 lots of this. But if we had something like y was equal to 5e to the, let's say, x squared, then dy by dx would be, you keep your 5 where it is, differentiate the exponent and get 2x, and then e to the power of x squared. You keep it as it is. You don't reduce the power or anything like that, like with poly polynomials. So that would be 10x e to the x squared. If y is ln x, dy by dx is 1 over x. So for example, if y was 5 ln x, then keep the 5 out of, out of trouble out the front, dy by dx would be 5 times 1 over x, which is 5 over x. And if y was equal to ln of a function, uh, then the derivative is, is, so if y is ln of f of x, the derivative is f dash x over f of x. So for example, if y was equal to ln x squared plus 1, dy by dx would be the derivative of the function, 2x, all divided by um, the function inside the, the logarithm, x squared plus 1. Next set of rules we learned were the trig rules. Um, sine x going to cos x is not given in the exam. Okay, cos x going to negative sine is not given in the exam. Tan going to sec squared is, and cosec and sec and, and cot are. So the only ones you need to be able to remember are the derivative of sine x, which is cos x, and the derivative of cos x, which is negative sine x. Right, I want to do several examples here, going through each of the different styles of questions that can come up. I suggest you pause the video, try to differentiate, mark against mine in five seconds. Let's start. Okay, what rule should I use? Well, we should use the product rule because you've got two functions, u and v, multiplied together. If u was e to the x and v was sine x, you could say that u dashed was e to the x and v dashed was cos x. And you know by the product rule that dy by dx is uv dash plus vu dash. This is not given to you in the formula booklet. You must be able to recall this and remember that. Okay, now it's a substitution game. dy by dx is therefore v, uh, uv dash, so it would be e to the x cos x plus v u dash, and v is sine x, uh, u dash is e to the x, so I'm going to put the e to the x there. You could factorise out the e to the x and call it cos x plus sine x. And that's it. There's your dy by dx. Done. Okay, next, example two. Pause, have a go. In five seconds I go through. Okay, hopefully you should realise this was a quotient, u over, uh, over v, and dy by dx by the quotient rule, which is given to you in the exam, is v u dashed, subtract u v dashed, all over v squared. If u is ln x, u dash, the differential of ln x is 1 over x. If v is sin x, the differential v dashed of sin x is cos x. So let's do our substitution. dy by dx is therefore v u dash, so sin x times 1 over x. So I'm going to write that as 1 over x multiplied by sin x. Subtract u v dash, so ln x times cos x. So ln x times cos x, all divided by v squared, all divided by uh, sine x squared. And that would be uh, your derivative. Can we do any tidying up at all? Um, well, you know, not, not particularly really. I would just uh, leave the answer like that, to be honest. Okay, so moving on to the next example, pause, try, and then mark. Hopefully you realise this was a product rule, u and v. u was 2x to the 4, so u dash would be 8x cubed. v was sine x, and so v dash would be cos x. I took this straight from the scheme of work, so this was an example they put there. This is the product rule which is not given in the exam, it's uv dash plus vu dash. 
let's sub in. dy by dx is therefore u times v dashed, which is 2x to the power of 4 multiplied by cos at x, and then plus v u dash, which is sine x, and then times u dash, which is 8x cubed. We could tidy this up a little bit. We could take a factor of 2 out, take a factor of x cubed out. We'd be left with x cos x from here, and we'd be left with 4 uh, sine x from here. And that would be it, your derivative. Example 4, pause, have a go, go through in 5 seconds. Quotient, u over v, use the quotient rule, dy by dx, this is given in the formula booklet, v u dash minus u v um, dashed all over v squared, u is e to the 3x, so u dashed is the derivative of uh, the exponent, which is 3 e to the same exponent, 3x, and v is x, so v dashed would be 1. Sub in dy by dx is therefore v u dashed, so it would be x, 3e to the 3x, subtract u v dashed, so e to the 3x times 1, all over v squared, which is x squared. Could we tidy that up? Well, we could factorise an e to the 3x at the front. We'd have 3x here, subtract 1, all divided by x squared. And that would be our dy by dx in a nice, tidy way. Example 5, pause, have a go. We'll mark together. OK, this is uh, tricky. Now, I want to point something out. This is y is equal to cos of x, cos of x squared. There should be brackets around that, really. It is not y is cos of x squared, because if it was, it would have the brackets there to remind you that it's the whole of cos x squared, and we usually even write that as cos squared x to avoid the confusion. So therefore, this is uh, uh, of the form y is equal to cos f of x. And if you remember how to differentiate that, dy by dx, you differentiate the expression inside the cos, f dashed x. You differentiate the cos, you get a negative sign, so I'm going to put the negative here, sign, and you evaluate it at f of x. So let's use that uh, rule here. Let's say that dy by dx is therefore the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, multiplied by, well, the derivative of cos x is negative sign, evaluated at x squared. So just to tidy this up, it would be negative 2x sine of x squared. Okay, example 6. Remember, if you're differentiating something of the form f of x to the power of n, dy by dx, you could bring down the n, differentiate by the expression inside the brackets and reduce the expression in the brackets by one power, so it'd be to the n minus one. Okay, we can use this idea here. So if we write this as y is actually equal to tan of 2x, um, let's call that squared, it might make it easier for us. So dy by dx, bring down the power of two there, Differentiate tan 2x. The differential of tan 2x is 2, the differential inside here, sec squared 2x, and then reduce the tan 2x in power by 1, so it would be just tan 2x to the power of 1. So if you uh, simplify this, it would be 4 sec squared 2x tan of 2x, and you're done. Okay, last example, uh, find dy by dx if x is equal to sine 3y. x is the subject of the formula here, so what we could do is we could work out dx by dy. Differentiate with respect to y, you would get 3, the differential inside the brackets is 3, 
times the difference of sine which is cos and then of 3y and so dy by dx is therefore um, the, the inverse of this so it's 1 over the sorry the a reciprocal of this 1 over 3 cos uh, 3y and uh, that's that you could it, well there's no there's no point really but you could remember that cos 3 cos squared 3y is 1 minus sine squared 3y it, it it's not necessary this sine squared 3y is x that's 1 minus x squared so cos squared 3y is 1 minus x squared so cos squared so cos of 3y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared not essential but uh, I just thought I'd show it anyway. That would be fine in an exam. And that's all the different types of examples to cover off all the work we've done on differentiation. Now, hopefully you found uh, that useful. I would suggest for you, just to finish off, that you do the mixed exercise in the book just to cover off all the topics on differentiation. Thank you very much for watching.